following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today I'm, I'm joined with uh, the director of the Film and Television Office of the New Hampshire. How's it? Uh, how's New it? Hampshire Film and Television Office. New Hampshire Film and Television Office. Matt Newton. Thank Matthew for, Newton. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Sure. Uh, like I said before camera, I, I, I didn't know that you existed. I didn't know your department existed. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you're explaining it to me, it makes a lot of sense. So tell, tell us a little bit about your role. Yeah, uh, sure. The, the, the Film and Television Office is, has been on again, off again state agency since the on Golden Pond days. And, right. and basically the role of a film office is to act as a liaison for any film or TV projects that are coming into the state. These producers don't know the lay of the land. They're not familiar with the state that they're filming in. So there needs to be a point person that can kind of help them along and, and get them the things that they need for a smooth shoot. And mm -hmm. so... My role is to act as that liaison, that point person when a project comes in. I can speak both film, I can speak government, and so when they talk to me in the film language, I can usually translate that around uh, into government and talk to the right agencies to, to help things along. Right. Um, for example, uh, road closures. That's a, it's a very popular request, and uh, we're going to f be filming XYZ, and we need a road closed. Uh, can you help us out with that? And whether it's a city road or, or a state road, um, I'll contact the right people and the right agencies and, and uh, do what we can to make that to make that happen. So you get the road crews, all, all you know, the police, everybody. Yeah, the, the, the production will hire the right people, whether they need police escorts or details, things like that. But um, I'm usually the one that can help uh, grease the skids and open a few doors and say, these are the people you should be talking to mm. um, and maybe help it along because I know that any film production coming into the state is, is a good thing for the state. Right. So you, you basically help out with the tourism of the state, you give it a, gives it a face? Yeah, I mean, you think about On Golden Pond, you know, to this day, people still come to New Hampshire. I feel go, good that I asked you yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they come to Golden Pond. They want to see Squam Lake. They want to be a part of where that movie took place. Mm -hmm. And so film tourism right now is a big buzzword around the nation. And Films that have big budget films out there in the movie theaters are, are also coming up with itineraries so tourists can come. My role is, is much like tourism, where tourism, are, they're trying to bring in people from the outside and right. getting them to spend their money, come to restaurants, stay nights in hotels. I do exactly the same thing, except it's geared for the film and television industry. Very so interesting. That's how I promote the state for I, I know the kids went to uh, New York this year, and uh, they got one, one of those buses, and you know mm -hmm. they get on the bus, and they drove by a production. They don't know who they saw. They just saw the bright lights. And we saw somebody famous, and they yeah. took pictures, and it was a blur. So they don't know who was doing a film. But they obviously, you have to talk to City Hall if yeah. you're going to do a production like that. And, uh, I don't know if you I've never seen it in New Hampshire where, oh, yeah, there's a film going on. But uh, maybe we can be a double or something or be in the background doing something. It's exciting. We actually had a, an independent film a few years ago called Live Free or Die that shot in Claremont. And they needed um, a bunch of police cruisers. Mm -hmm. So not only were they able to get the city to loan over some police cruisers, they eventually put some signage over Claremont to make it whatever fictional town they were, they were making it. But they got the police officers to essentially act as stunt doubles oh. and, and drive the vehicles around. And, Nobody and, going and, and they loved that. They loved that. We got to be a stunt double in the movie. So That's cool. th there were those opportunities. And I think when I talk to communities about, hey, we've got the potential of bringing a project to your area, there's a lot of excitement around it. 
there. There's, a, there's people know that, hey, it's bright lights, it's a lot of trucks, there are people milling about. Uh, it's a lot of activity, and, and people right. know what that can do. And, and that translates into dollars. Obviously, you're going to be hiring the, the police officers to do yeah. uh, double time, and, and but that'll translate on the other end. Well, now you're getting exposure. They're going to be coming into the town. They're going to yes. be going into the shops. They'll be using the hotel facilities, uh, the, the gas, everything. Exactly, for exactly. All. I mean, right out of the production gate, it's um, th there's a saying that there's nothing you can think of that, that can't be used for a film. Mm -hmm. So whether we're talking about going to a lumber yard for wood for set building or a floor shop for decorating that set, going to stores for wardrobe, um, hiring people, catering, obviously you gotta feed your, your cast and crew. So everything you can think of, there's a potential that a, that a film production could utilize that and ultimately spend money on that. Uh, who, now is it just Hollywood that comes here or, or uses that or is it, are there states that will come mm -hmm. in and say, hey, look, uh, you know, we're not Hollywood, but mm -hmm. we've got this production. Uh, who, what are the typical type of people? Yeah, well, oddly enough right now, just on the state of, of how things are around the country, there's the big buzz term right now are tax credits, and there's a lot of states that are luring big productions to their jurisdictions mm -hmm. in order to get those dollars. Um, New Hampshire right now currently does not have a tax credit for film production, but in turn what I think it's it's doing is it's carving out a niche for the lower budgeted independent films that are not going after those tax credits strictly in other states. So we're seeing a lot of the lower budget films come in um, and, the, and the requests are always the same whether you're large or small people are going to have to hire people they're going to have to close roads they're going to have to utilize locations so we treat all projects equally whether, whether you're a student project all the way up if, if Spielberg came into town so uh, all the requests are the same, and the impact can always be the same. So right now we're really focusing on um, independent films, commercial shoots. We have a lot of photography shoots, catalog shoots. You know, you open, it's a beautiful state. Yeah, you open these product catalogs, and you see the backdrops with the, with the boots sitting in the foreground or something. A lot, you know, a lot of that is New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, maybe print advertisements in magazines. We've been getting a lot of those lately, especially during the fall season. When the, when the foliage is turning very popular. Have you worked with the military or the guard at all with any type of film uh, production or is that? Um, uh... No, not directly, not directly. I know they do a lot of production on their own mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of these projects are their own well-oiled machine and, and they do their own thing. Reality TV, for instance, I mean, they're, they're, one of the great things about New Hampshire is that there's, there are no general filming permits in the state, meaning that if I'm a producer, if I go into New Hampshire, I'm not required to register my project with the state and to take out a permit. We're free just, state. Just to be, we are, just to be there. Nice. Um, some, some cities and towns have their own regulations as, as far as special use and, and really it's uh, as far as an application, maybe a small fee and a conversation. Do they contact you first for that or do you, and you act as a liaison or do they go right to the town officials? It, it works both ways. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the projects know what they're going to do and they say, hey, can, can you help us out? Can you put in a phone call? Sometimes it's, they just want me to know about it. Um, you know, if they're filming on private property, for instance, they don't need a filming permit um, anyway. So if, they, if they've made an agreement with the property owner, they can film in the backyard. However, professionals will still call me and say, just to give you a heads up, we're going to be filming a horror movie in, in the backyard of Joe Smith's house. They'll take it seriously if the heads you know, rolling and, and, off the and, lawn. And what I will do is I'll contact the police department and give them a heads up yeah. in case they hear screams later, right. later in the <laughs> evening. And, and uh, I can tell them, no, it's a, there's a movie being filmed back there. Well, that's interesting. Now, during the political season, obviously, you've got to be busy. I mean, it's busy. So somebody's flying in, okay, you get, they have to call you. We got to get a special detail for the president, the vice president, and of course the candidate that's coming up. After a while, your head must be swimming. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, a lot of those things are well-oiled machines, and they, and they do things on their own. But a lot of times, I'll get calls: "Hey, we, we're we're doing a press conference. Uh, we need some camera people. You know, um, can you help us out? We're doing some behind-the-scenes video for a campaign, or even shooting a campaign ad itself." They'll they'll contact us and say, hey, do you have a production company locally that our production company can work with? So there's, there's a lot of ways projects can tie in and a lot of ways that I can help, but uh, uh, it, it's a very busy time of year that year. So when somebody, when a state rep wants a, a, a 
press conference, they call your office. Or well, not necessarily. Usually when, when a, a legislator calls a press conference, the, the media will show up anyway, depending on the subject depending matter. Depending upon but, the yeah, subject matter. But, but say uh, a representative was interested in doing a campaign ad and didn't quite know, hey, who, who am I supposed to use to, to do this ad? They can contact me, and I can give them some referrals on camera people, editors. I was just going to ask you about that. Now, during, you know, there's a lot of kids that are they're getting involved with, mm. with the, you know, we even here at, at Local Access, we have uh, kids coming in learning how to edit, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, whether it's lacrosse or, or, or any topic. Yeah. And they can use the facility free. They can learn how, how you know, the green room works. I mean, obviously, we're, we're, we're looking at a lily yeah. pad, but we get a nice little background. I actually get the halo. Nice. Just, yeah, nice. It's pretty cool. It looks great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took a lot of work. Uh, but do you uh, get kids involved in, in, in the film as well? I mean, do they contact your department? Or? Sure, I get, I get contacted. One of the things that we started in 2008, um, I, I'm a former film student myself, went to Keene State College for film and, and did some time out in Los Angeles before moving back. What I wanted to do is, is provide an opportunity to students that I didn't really get the opportunity to have. And, and that was a film festival. Mm. And so in 2008, we launched the, the New Hampshire High School Short Film Festival. Um, and we had 20 entries and we screened them all. Now we ha it's gotten so big that we have a selection process. It's limited to a two hour screening. The bar has been set extremely high. Um, and, and these kids love it. We're getting over 50, 60 entries a year now. Um, and a number of schools have worked the festival into their curriculum now. So at the end of the year, they know that the projects that these students are making are going to be sent in for consideration for the festival. When you say that they're setting the bar, is it what they use? Are they, do they have to like use a Pro Tools, or do they have to use a certain type of? Uh... I've had projects shot on iPhones. OK. I... And, and it's, it's, it ranges from professional or prosumer you know, equipment, uh, small cameras, HD cameras, to you know the phones that the kids have these days, and they're they're making videos right on there. Um, it's really interesting that the equipment and technology is so accessible these days that um, I'm seeing more video production than ever, and it's 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 great to see because back in my day, it was you know you either got your hands on a film camera or you had really bad low quality VHS right. video, you know, and, and so lots of editing. Yeah, so and yeah. now these projects look. Beautiful. Oh, we yeah. have an 11 year old that has one of those iPads yeah. all day long. That's all they do with, with a YouTube video. They make a YouTube video out of it with the, with the soundtrack. Yeah. And they can have scary effects. And I'm thinking, this is, that's all they're doing with their yeah. friends. And they're doing, they're doing it Skype. It, it's... And, and community access media is wonderful. I, yeah. I actually was, I just stepped off the board of, of Conquer TV. Mm -hmm. I was the chair there for a few years. And the, the same is true there. It's th these places where kids can go, the public can go, and learn video production, uh, learn these tools, and then create content for the channels. The where do you think that's going to go? I mean, be, be not you, you didn't have it when you were younger. Now that it's becoming more and more popular, it, it's going to be flooded with people just wanting to use it because everybody has an opinion, everybody mm -hmm. has an idea, or a lot of people do. Uh, where does this go? Does, does this mean we're going to be flooded with a bunch of... Uh, uh, indie films or what? Um, I would like to think so. Uh, you know, uh, some of these people go on and they end up becoming cinematic storytellers. Some of them are more news reporters. Some of them just want to be able to share their thoughts and ideas and create content and put it on the web, which is all great. Um, and I'm there for any questions they might have along the way. I have people asking me things like, how do I go about funding a film? So crowdfunding is a, is a big topic mm. right now, whether it's Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And, and um, I'll give them some tips, and we do panels and workshops and things like that. Um, right down to um, just video production workshops where I can put them in, in touch with uh, industry professionals and, you know, cable access stations like this. And, and uh, I'm just there to be a resource, a video production resource. <clears throat> a little, I want to just backtrack a little bit about mm -hmm. this thing, this tax credit. I know sure. you said there was a, some legislation that's being t tossed around at least to... Uh, you know, give some tax credit for our industry to, to come into the state. If, if that were to come, if they were to come in, if there were to be a tax credit, what, what do you envision that, how would that help? Um, how would it help? I, I think a tax credit would boost production. I hear from studios all the time saying, you know, we don't go to New Hampshire. It's, it's virgin territory for us. We would love to film there, but ultimately the bottom line comes down to 
uh, the tax credit, and that's what they're looking at right now. So that's why we're focusing more on the independent film, who, mm. quite honestly, between you and me and the people out there, feel like they're being shut out a little bit from states that are offering big incentives because the studios are clamoring for those. So let's, let's bring in the independent film and let's round out what's happening. Would right that now. weed them out a little, though? Would it weed it, out the independents? Um, I, I think us you know, focusing more attention on independence would be great. I think it's the same economic impact. Okay. Um, but going back to the tax credit, I, uh, it's, it, it, I feel it would work. It would bring in more production. But I've always said that whatever it is done, it needs to be right for New Hampshire. We, right. just, we just can't carbon copy something that's successful in another state and, and you know, bookmark it here in New Hampshire. It just doesn't work that way. We have a very different tax structure here in the state. Our economy is very different. And we need to do something that fits that. The other thing is that this argument has been going on for years saying, well, why isn't the film office introducing some sort of legislation? And, and the answer has always been, well, it really needs to come from the industry. The, the reason it was so successful in Mass is that the, the Massachusetts Production Coalition got together. They rallied their membership, and they're the ones who really brought this to the state house and to their legislators. Um, two years ago, the New Hampshire Production Coalition formed, and they've been working very hard to pull together their membership and our industry members here as well. And they were able to get a sponsor, and they, they introduced some legislation, HB 540, uh, last session. And that's in committee now? or, or? It was in committee. Uh, it, was, it was voted by Ways and Means to retain it through the summer. They did some work on it, and um, they're, uh, at the time of this taping, they're, they're soon to be executing on that. Um, I, I don't know where that'll go. I'm, I'm not entirely certain it'll pass this time around. But I don't, I don't think that's a failure. I, I, I believe that this legislation and this process, I'm a big believer in the process, and it's brought about conversation about film in New Hampshire that we've never had. I, I, I have legislators and, and uh, people just calling me now asking, oh, I want to know more about this. Well, it seems to me it, it, we've got to get creative as, it, to get new industry into the state. Mm -hmm. Without industry, and the, the property owners take on more of the burden. So yep. let's bring in some industry. And this seems to be a creative way to do it. I yeah. mean, I haven't looked at the legislation yet. No, but, no, it, uh, it is a creative way to do it. Incentive is always a, an, an idea uh, it is. To, to help. So It is. It just needs to be done the right way. Right. Um, and I'm not sure if this draft is necessarily right yet, but we'll find a way to do this, whether we get creative about it and maybe we'll come up with something completely new that other states haven't tried. Um, the other thing I'm looking at is, is there's a lot of talk right now about retaining our youth. You know, we're, New Hampshire is getting older and older. Our, our youth, they're leaving to take jobs elsewhere. And what we're trying to do with the high school fest is get kids interested in what's happening right in our backyard. Mm -hmm. So the more production we can bring into the state, the more jobs will be available and our kids will stay New Hampshire and work New Hampshire and New England, um, which is being known now as Hollywood East, and I'd like to say right. You don't there. have to go to Hollywood West. We've got it. We've got it all here. Yeah, we've got the happening. seacoast. We've got the, the mountains. We've got the. We've got it all. And and my feeling is, with all the projects that are coming into Massachusetts right now, because of their incentives, it's such a close knit region mm -hmm. that I have New Hampshire people working on those projects as well, all the time. So as long as they're working, I'm happy. But boy, would I like to see it in our backyard. Right. How big is your department? You're looking at it. Wow. <laughs> it's it, it's really it's an office of one under the Department of Cultural Resources, which houses our state library, our historical resources, and the State Council on the Arts. In my office. Interesting. So you must work close with Bill Gardner at all, or do you? Um, every once in a while, uh, my office is under Van McLeod, Commissioner Van McLeod. So. So every time you mention history, I mean, I, I, I I'm automatically. Think automatically, Bill yeah. And the, the guy is just a walking. He is. Encyclopedia. encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, some future events that are coming up in, in the spring, what, what, what's going on? Well, the High School Film Festival, as I mentioned, it's, it's not happening. The entry uh, submission period doesn't happen until February 1st. But it's, we're in the process now of letting high schools know about it because they need to kind of plan out the next several months and uh, get the kids thinking about their projects. So it's, it's always good to start working on those now. Um, the festival usually happens May or June. We're looking at moving. The, it was June last time. We may move it back to sometime middle of May. Um, nhstudentfilm.com is the web, website for that where you can see uh, past winners and, and see what kind of films are being produced. 
What, um, what is NH? NHstudentfilm.com. Okay. And there's a lot of data on there about what types of submissions we've received and uh, um, who's been winning awards and what schools have been participating. Um, we just wrapped up the Snob Film Festival, which is the somewhat north of Boston Film Festival. We don't organize these festivals, but we do partner with all these festivals in the state. In October, we had the New Hampshire Film Festival mm -hmm. in Portsmouth. There we did a, a panel discussion and we host one of the after parties and we're involved in New Hampshire Day where they show New Hampshire made projects. Um, the Snob Film Festival, which was great as well, that's in Concord at Red River Theaters. And then in April is the new Monadnock Film Festival, which is going into its second year and we're involved in that as well. We have one person from uh, the studio here, Mr. Mr. Young. He, I'm not sure which festival he was part of, but he... Uh, he did Fantastic a, filmmaker. He Fantastic. is. He did a very decent horror movie on the the attack water uh, attack melons. He did it in my office. Yeah, what's uh, I, I know the name. It's the the, mutant, the, the conquest of the mutant uh, killer cantaloupe or something. Killer like cantaloupe. That. Yeah, absolutely hilarious. Yeah, Dan does a great job. But that's creative. But that's something, it is. It, that's something that. Uh, yeah, he's been involved in in the uh, forty eight hour film festival. Right. And, right. Um, every spring. Um, it's a, it's a nationwide contest. Different states sponsor their own contests. And um, it's very exciting. And I get calls from frantic filmmakers during that time. Um, you know, in the limited amount of time that they have to film their projects, you know, can I uh, secure this location or that location or can you help me out with this or that? Mm -hmm. um, I try to do uh, as little as possible, just to be fair, but um, if, if they know what they need ahead of time, then, you know, we can help secure things. I just, you know, when they were doing that film, you could, they were at, in the back of the stairs, they were dropping the watermelon, the, the melons down the stairs, you can yeah. have them, but, 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 but. Yeah. and of course they had to clean up their mess after, but <laughs> it, they only had a short <laughs> amount of time to do it. It was actually funny. Mm. Um, as far as getting prepared for one of these festivals, should students be working on it now, or, or are they allowed only to work on it after they've registered? Now they can, they can work on it any time, and it's, it's open to uh, any enrolled high school student or homeschooled student um, of that same age range. And as long as the film was produced after our most current festival, then it's eligible for the next festival. Okay. So they can work any, it can be either a class project, it can be an independent project. Um, some of the students do their own filmmaking on the sides and they can submit it, or it can be a part of a class project. And, and it has to all be original, obviously. It can't has be to be original, and, and we stress a lot. Um, that there's, there's a lot of restrictions on music use, um, copyright use, because we're trying to teach the kids, you know, not only do we want you to be creative, but we want you to be professional. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the business. No is plagiarizing. That you can't just lift your favorite pop song and, and lay it in as a music track. You either need to get permission for that or come up with some original music or use something that is or available. pay the artists for their music. Yeah, pay, pay the artists um, or, or at least get some sort of permission. I had one student uh, a year or two ago who had wall-to-wall -wall music, different songs, and I, I approached him saying, look, I, I don't know if we can consider this because it's got a lot of familiar songs in here. Uh, it was more indie bands, not necessarily top 40 radio, but... Uh, it's still and, copyright. And, and he sent me every email that he sent to those artists saying, could I use, use your music in my student film? And they all said yes. So oh. um, he got the permissions and he sent the documentation to me and that was great. I had another filmmaker who had copyrighted music, couldn't use it, and then took his friends and went out and they wrote their own music. So it's, it's even you know, providing them an opportunity to nice. get creative. Flexing your muscles a little bit you and know? learning what the real world's about. Yeah. You know? You know, I'm a musician, and it, when I, uh, I'd love to hear my music out there. I haven't, but I'd love to hear it. Let us know. Yeah. We'll, we'll get some students tied in with you, and maybe yeah. we can use them in their projects. But it, 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 it would be an honor to, to some, and to others, it would be say, hey, well, you know, you didn't yeah. ask me, you know, what are you doing? You know, right. That's, that's, that's part of us. Uh, we want to get paid it's, for it. It's important, because we're trying to teach not only the students, but the teachers that um, this, this festival, while a student-based festival is is not really a classroom setting you know there's a lot of talk about you know fair use of, mm -hmm. of copyrighted material and, and while that's good in a classroom setting um, this is a public screening and actually the winners the two winners of our film festival get their film screened at the three other film festivals in the state so it turns into a very public 
screaming for that, them. Can it be, is it individuals or can it be groups? Or? It can be both. Okay. And uh, that's interesting because we, we do have individual filmmakers who submit, um, but we have schools like, like Pinkerton, for example, that have worked it into their curriculum. They, they group them in four. And so there are four students attached with each project. And so we've had to modify our, our rules a little bit, saying that you can have up to like four directors for one project. And other schools are starting to do the same thing, where they can say, you know, we're doing projects for the film festival for submission. We're going to break you up into groups, and this is what we're going to do. So is it, it's great. Is there an age limit? It's just if you're uh, in high school or if you're homeschooled aged, I believe it's 14 through 18. I, I know. Uh, the reason I've asked that is because I'm, I'm seeing the popularity in the 11, the 12 yeah. year olds, the 13 year olds, and they're doing it constantly. And yeah. of course, it's one big laugh. It's a big giggle. And then, you know, and then it's also painful because we have to watch all these. Yes. You know, look, <laughs> it's the same thing, but we're doing something different with a different song. And it's fun, but you can see that they're given a lot of tools. Yeah. Uh, with the iPads, uh, the, the, I don't know what it's called, the <clears throat> iCut or whatever it is, but yeah. uh, it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, they, you know, they create their own little horror stories, too. In, in, yeah, in we hear papers. about that. I mean, I, I, I've done panels at various arts and education conferences. We just did one recently. Um, and that's always a topic of discussion. You know, here we have a festival for students to make films. Well, some schools are better equipped than others. Mm -hmm. is that, does that give them an advantage? And I tell them not necessarily, because what we're judging them is not necessarily how polished the film looks. It's how well they tell their story. And... If they want to take their iPhone or somebody's phone or an iPad or whatever you want to use, uh, an old Hi8 video camera, remember those, and, mm -hmm. uh, um, and make a movie out of it, then as long as you're telling your story and you've told it well, then you're in the running. Yeah. So, Do you think that it'll eventually move to, to the lower, you know, like the middle schools? We'd like to. It's just it's been such a big beast at the high school level. We'd, we want to do something at the college level as well as the lower grades, and uh, we're just trying to iron out all the wrinkles on the high school one. And you know what's interesting? And, you know, you go to every town, mm -hmm. and you'll see that there's a dance studio here, there's a karate studio there. Why not a studio to teach the kids how to make a film? Yeah. That's an industry that we could use. Just thinking. Oh, it right. is. It, it's, it, I would like to see more of that. You know, people tend to think film as just an art form, and they don't realize the impact that it has in, in many different directions, whether it's you know, direct economic impact or tourism impact or um, there's just, there's a lot that comes with the film industry. So what we're hoping is to teach these kids that, look, it's, you know, yeah, sure, writing and directing is great, but there's all sorts of things that come with it, whether you're a grip moving equipment around or you're a costumer or you want to get into makeup or editing. There's a lot of different fields, or you could be a state film commissioner, you know, I, I mean, that, that was my path. So th there's a lot of different fields to get into and, and uh, a lot of different opportunities. Well, great. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? They can go to our website. It's uh, nh.gov slash film. Um, we're on Twitter as well. If you're on Twitter, it's uh, at nhfilmoffice or at Matt Newton um, and on Facebook at uh, filmnh. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank hey, you very much. It was much. a pleasure. Thank okay. you so much. And if you uh, have an interest in film or you have a student that's interested in film, you know, get in touch. Uh, find out what, what it's all about. Uh, check out with Ash, uh, Access Nashville here as, as well. Uh, we have a, a beautiful facility here, and uh, the price is right. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining us. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.